Tracy, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, I upcycle clothes and I love to make fun, edgy pieces out of thrifted items. And today we're upcycling a pair of bell bottom jeans. Now these were just a plain old pair of Levi's. And now they're a flared leg with fringe and patches and a braid belt. So let's get started. These are the jeans I'm starting with. They're called boot cut, but to me they look more straight leg. They're Levi's, light wash. Um, the content tag is cut out, so I'm not sure what fabric content it is, but I'm pretty sure there's at least 1% probably spandex in these. But 100% um, cotton is my favorite, but that's kind of hard to find at my goodwill. For it, 100% cotton jeans for some reason seem to get picked over, but I'm going to put these on and show you how I get started. Okay, so the first thing I do is put the jeans on, and then I would be standing up, but I'm sitting down here so I can talk to you. I want my, I'll have a band at the bottom of this, and I want that band to be about seven inches, but seven and a half inches cut. So, I'm going to my seven and a half inch mark and I want my bell bottoms to go over my boot and touch the floor. So I have heels on, so I'm measuring while I have these on. So I want this to be about seven and a half inches, the band, and that shows me I need to cut about two inches off my jeans. The next thing I need to do is make a slit in the side of my jeans. This is where we'll open it up and put a triangle piece of denim in there to really widen out the leg. But first I need a slit in order to do that on each side. And I am marking mine from the bottom at 11 inches with a piece of chalk. Okay, so 11 inches may seem a little short, but you have to remember we're adding seven inches to the bottom of these jeans eventually. So that actually brings it up to about 18 inches when it's all finished. Now this is still the front of my jeans. And to cut that slit, I am going to the side seam and I'm going to cut just inside towards the front of the jeans. Usually I do the back when I do other projects, but this time it'll be in the front. And you see this thick seam right here? I'm going to avoid that. So I will probably go to about here and cut. And then I will just cut that open up to my chalk mark. And that's what we have. And I will do that on the other leg. Now I'm going to leave the slits alone for a while because this is a perfect opportunity to do any sewing that you have to do on the pant legs. It's hard to get into these pant legs sometimes and it's a lot easier to work if they're cut open or even partially open like this. So I'm going to put a few patches on. I will take, I took a little square and it's a similar color basically. Just a little difference. I don't want these to be like harsh and dramatic high contrast. So my little square is two and a half by two and a half inches, and I'll probably put that about there on the leg. And then I have one that's five inches long and four inches tall, and I'll put that a little higher. And so I'll kind of position those where I want them, and then I'll pin them on. This is what they look like pinned on. I moved this one down a little bit. And I will just go to my machine and I will sew those on. Now this patch, I will come in through the top of the jeans and put that through my sewing machine and sew this one on. Now this one's close enough to the slit that I'll be able to get in there with my machine and sew that one on. And I'll just do sort of a small straight stitch and I'll use gold thread because most jeans are sewn with gold thread and these are too. And I'll stay about half an inch away from that line because that will allow extra fraying. If you sewed real close to the line, 
you'll just have minimal amount of fraying because that stitch will stop any fraying. So I will come in a good half inch and just go around there. Now I have these patches sewn on and I just want to turn them over and I will put one more patch just on the rear end here and I will have it, let's see, I'll let you know how big it is. This is about five by five, and I will just let it touch that pocket a little bit, and I want it sort of towards the middle. I'll just put it right there. I'll pin it on, go in through the top, and sew it just like I did the patches on the back. These are just denim patches, and um, I have a bunch of remnant denim, but my favorite source for denim are like giant um, skirts, or go to the men's section and go to the XXXXL, the biggest size they have. And those jeans are large and they will give you a lot of denim. There. Now I have that patch all sewn on. Now I do want to work on the slits on the side and make that bell bottom. So what I do is I just have craft paper here and I folded it in half and that helps me to mark and measure that little crease right there and what I did is my slit is 11 inches long but I want this to be 13 inches so I went to that crease in the middle of my craft paper and I marked 13 inches and then what I do is I want it to be 12 inches down at the bottom. So I just measure six inches and six inches. Okay, so I have a mark up 13, a mark over six, and a mark from the crease over another six. And I just connect those dots. Whoops. <laughs> okay. So now I have my triangle and I will just cut that out. Now that I have my pattern cut out, I went back to my men's jeans and I need to cut out two denim triangles, one for each leg. So I just chose a spot on my denim that I want lay this on top and I'm just taking a piece of chalk and I'm just going to trace it. Now I have this traced and before I cut it, just a quick tip to make your life easier, draw a little arrow which side is up. Because I know this is taller but it's pretty close and sometimes it gets confusing when you're sewing it on. So. You can do it on the opposite side. This is just chalk, it'll wash out. So now I will cut it out. Here are my two triangles. I'll set those aside just for a second. And I'm going to take my jeans and turn them inside out. Okay, I have this all pinned. I ended up snipping the tip of the triangle off I didn't need all that extra sewing and it covered the point so it looks good. Now I'll go and pin the opposite side. Now that I have both legs pinned, I'll just go to my machine and sew that triangle on. I'll stay very close to the edge, probably less than a quarter of an inch. I'll use a smallish straight stitch and I'll use gold thread. Okay, I always take my front plate off when I'm working on jeans or narrow areas. Then I just open up the legs, slide it in, do a stitch, a back stitch, and just follow it around. It'll get, it's not hard at all, but when you get up here, you just have to go a little slower because it's, you know, you're pushing a pant leg through this whole sewing machine and it gets a little tight, but not hard. 
I turned them right side out and this is what we have so far. Some nice high water bell bottoms. <laughs> um, where I sewed these triangles in, there's an overlap here and that'll just give us some nice fraying and some more detail. And now what we need to do is add the seven inch band to the bottom. How I want to cut out that band is I want it to be a little bit curved so that it lays nicely at the bottom of the pant leg. And how I do that is I take a bowl, you know, like those big bowls, we eat popcorn out of them. And I will just lay it on a pant leg, maybe halfway down the bowl right here. And then I will trace it. I'll use my marker so that you can see it better. So I'll just trace like that. And that gives us sort of a little half circle. And then I will take my ruler. And I want my band to be seven and a half inches. It'll be about seven inches when it's done, but I need seven and a half for a seam allowance. So let's see, seven inches will start about right there for me. Down here, I'm not getting seven and a half inches. Oops. So I'll go to about here and I'll mark seven and a half inches from that half circle. And then I'll just keep going around I have this dark ruler. It's really hard to see the numbers. I don't know where my white one is. So I am just marking all around. I'll go all the way around seven and a half inches. You see what I'm doing there? There's my line. I marked seven and a half inches. And if I do that all the way around, it gives me a nice rainbow shape for my pant leg. Now I'm just going to cut out that around that dark line that I drew and the chalk mark. Okay, here I have two of those shapes cut out and you can do a solid color all the way around the bottom if you want. I want it to look like a patchwork so I am going to cut these into pieces and I will use, I like seams. I'll use some seams in some of them. This is actually the same denim. It's just turned over and I'll use the light side because I do want a higher contrast with these. And so I will go to my machine and I'll just overlap them and stitch them. You know, you could do wrong sides together, right sides together, but I will just overlap them and I will do a zigzag stitch in the gold thread and I'll just keep working with it. You know, maybe this one will be thinner and then maybe I'll go to a completely different denim that's a different color and I will just keep piecing them together and I don't have a measurement for this, but I'll just lay it up to my pant leg and see do I need a few more or a couple more and even if you get it too short it's so easy to go and add on to it even as you're sewing it so I will just keep working and get kind of the patchwork look that I want and stitch them together until I have enough and then I'll show you what I do here I've cut out just a whole stack of them and I alternated colors and I'll just take this whole thing over to my mach my machine and just start sewing it together and when I think I have a large enough um, band I'll just come and compare it to the pant leg and see if I think it's big enough and I'll just kind of play with it like that okay here's what I have so far and I zigzag stitched it it's not lined up perfectly at the bottom and that is okay. 
And a good way to check and see if your um, band is going to be big enough is I fold it in half and I just lay this um, flare out and if it sort of lines up, good chance it's big enough. So what I will do is I will zigzag stitch this on to the jeans and I will start anywhere, it doesn't matter. So let's just say I started here. I am going to start one inch from the end and that's so that we have room to sew it together when we're completely around the pant leg. So I'll lay it, oh, about half an inch overlapping the bottom and then I'll start sewing an inch in and not right here and I'll show you why and I'll just zigzag stitch all the way around until I get to the end and then I'll show you how I piece that together. Okay I changed my mind on how I'm going to close this up. So remember when I said start sewing one inch in? I went ahead and sewed it straight on because all I'm going to do is overlap this and then stitch it together. Let me show you. Okay, so now we're getting close to where I started here. I'll just go right over top of where I started. You know, maybe an inch overlapping where I started. Then, then what I'll do is I'll just trim off my excess, making sure, so here's where we started. I overlapped at the top here. And now I am just going to trim some off, making sure that I will have enough to sew here because I'll just zigzag stitch that shut. Okay, so I trimmed a little bit off. We're still open here and I just will stitch that shut. All right, now I have one all done. Time to go to the other pant leg. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And now I'm going to show you how I do a little distressing in the leg because these will have some suede, just sort of fringe tied on to the distressed areas. So that'll be the last thing I do before I stick it in the washer. But then we need to make the suede fringe and I'm going to make a braid belt. So where I want to do most of the distressing is on this leg with the small patch, but then I'll just do a little bit on the opposite side. I have a cutting board and it's small because I like to be able to stick it in pant legs. And then I have a box cutter and this is a slice brand box cutter that I get from Amazon, but any box cutter will do. And I will show you with a piece of chalk where I'm going to make my marks and or make my cuts and I'll probably just do a few like right there and then I'll have to pull my cutting board down a little bit and I'll probably just make a couple you know, about right there. And what I do, I have to turn this so that I can work it. Oops. I need to pull my cutting board back up. There we go. And then I will just take my box cutter and I won't just cut along those little three lines that I drew. I'll kind of mess it up in between that whole 
between the top line and the bottom line. And some will go all the way through and some won't. Now, if you don't like um, having your legs show through, you might want to do this part before you sew the bell bottom in because then you can patch it from the inside and you can still get that frayed look without showing the leg. Now I'm going to slide my cutting board down and I'll get these last couple Now, on the opposite lot, the opposite leg, oh, where's my chalk? Hold on, I'm trying to find my chalk. There we go. So, we have distressing here, distressing here. Now, on the opposite leg, I just kind of want to go in the middle of where those are and just make a couple more little slits. Okay, now I'm ready to wash and dry these, and that will just help all the fraying take place. I'll wash mine in hot on a regular cycle, dry it on a hot setting in a regular cycle in the dryer, and then um, I'll go throw these in, and then we'll just make the fringe and the belt real quick. Okay, now I just want to make like five little pieces of fringe to tie into the distressing into the jeans. And I use coats and jackets from the thrift store. Um, when I get them home, I wash and dry them in the washer. They always kind of, well, most of the time kind of smell weird because it's expensive to dry clean these. I don't know, $30, $40. And back when I sold, I would never make any money if I had to dry clean all the leather that I use. So I experimented one day and now I've been doing it for years. I put it in the washer and dryer, or the washer on a cold setting, and then I dry them in the dryer. I tried line drying them before, but they get real stiff. So I put them in the washer and dryer. I'm just cutting fringe with them, so it doesn't really matter. If I was going to wear it, I would never do that. But So all I did here was just cut a little chunk out of the jacket. So to cut this, all I do is I'm kind of going down the center here because that's the longest piece and I want them as long as possible. I just use my cutting mat, my straight edge, and a rotary cutter and make some strips, you know, maybe a little bit over a quarter of an inch long or wide, maybe a quarter of an inch. So I'll just make like five of those. And I'll set those aside. My jeans are in the washer and dryer, and I won't put them on till tie these on until I'm done. But um, you can tie these tight. I had another pair of jeans that I did a similar thing to, and I just tied them in a double knot, and I washed them in the washer and dryer right with the jeans. But if you don't want to do that, you can tie it loosely and then remove them every time you want to wash the jeans. Either way. So the final thing I did while the jeans are washing is make this yarn braid for a belt. And I used earthy colors. And I want it long. I'm going to tie it in a knot and then just let it kind of drape down the leg. But you might want a big loose bow. You might want it kind of like mine. So the best thing to do is just take a piece of string or yarn and just feel it out how long you want it. Do you want it in a knot, a loose bow? And then whatever measurement you get on that, add two feet because braiding it really shrinks it up. So that's all I did for that. Here they are, all washed and dried. A lot more fraying has taken place. Super cute. And now I'm going to tie some of those suede fringes on. Okay, this is just where kind of personal preference comes in. I think I'll do a tie over here. I just slip it in between some of those cuts there. And 
You know, if you don't want to do suede fringe, you can, I'm going to tie it with one, one being longer than the other. But you can use, you know, a bandana. I've done that before. That's really cute. Or even just strips of fabric. I call them rag ties. And I think that's really cute too. And so I think for sure I'll do one down here. And I can't decide yet if I want to do one or two up in there. I have to just kind of feel it out. And again, I'm going to make one longer than the other. And just tighten a double knot because I will wash these along with the jeans. And then, let's see. I think I'll do two. More is more, right? <laughs> okay, I'll get those tied on and I'll show you what they look like and then we'll put the belt on. Okay, I just stuck my yarn braid through the belt loops and I'll tie it off to one side. I'll make a knot once I'm wearing them and then just let this hang down the leg. And now I'm going to go put them back on for you. Okay, so here they are again. Thank you so much for watching.